has been a buzz with the president's decision to cancel the summit. Uh, we had a couple tweets coming across here. You're seeing on your screen now James Lankford, a Republican senator from uh, Oklahoma, calling for North Korea to get back to the table for real dialogue. We also have a tweet here from Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania, who says it presents significant challenges for national security. And he says he hopes President Trump will approach these challenges in a thoughtful way to keep America safe. Obviously, everybody has a comment on this sort of thing tonight. A lot of folks weighing in. All yeah. right, let's bring in our panelists tonight. GOP strategist Kimberly Klasik and Democratic strategist Erica Thomas. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, let me start with you, Kimberly. Uh, so this is called off. There were a lot of folks who said they didn't ever think we would get to this point anyway. Right. Do you buy, you know, what the president said that this was called off because of Kim Jong-un? Um... Kind of, sort of. Okay. I think he's very good at negotiating deals. And okay. in his mind, this is part of the art of the deal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that, unfortunately, there was some insults thrown our way. And I think he probably feels like he has to kind of protect his team or administration, so to speak. And I think there's still more discussion that needs to go down. And I think, honestly, uh, for even Kim Jong-un, what did they say? They were going to dismantle the, North, uh, the nuclear weapons. Yeah. Then they said it happened overnight. It's such a complex thing. I don't believe that happened. And I think they're right to go back to the table. Erica, I think, you know, when we looked at this and we saw the president speaking at rallies and people were chanting, no bell, no bell, no bell. Um, but putting that aside, the fact that we, we got pretty close to this point, uh, do you think Democrats are willing to give the president, does he deserve credit for getting to this point, to get Mon Mike Pompeo over there to talk with Kim Jong-un? You know, I never really can, can really side with the president all the way on this because you have to really look into it. You know, did we actually believe that this was really going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, was this a hoax? Was this a stage to say that, yes, the president did something well this time, you know? And so congratulating him at this point, I don't know if this is something that I could do. Kimberly, you look like you, uh, <laughs> you, you got something you want to say there. Well, I think, you know, we called it off. I think we were going to get to that table. You know, he's the one that said we have to go back to the table and, and do something about it and, and figure out where we are and where we stand. I think it was going to happen. I think maybe there just needs to be more discussion. I support this decision. And to see Mia Love uh, in front of that press conference, for me, says a lot because she doesn't usually align herself with President Trump. By the way, you're referring to a Republican congresswoman from Utah, Mia yes, Love. Yes, yeah. yes. And she doesn't usually align herself with President Trump. So for her to be front and center at that press conference said a lot to me. She right. is Republican. <laughs> <laughs> All that right. We're going to switch the gears a little bit now and talk about um, the whole information with the GOP asking for this classified uh, briefing on the alleged FBI informant who the president we know you said was a spy within his uh, campaign to try to report back to the Justice Department on him. Um, Democrats were pushing to be involved. I believe we just learned that there will be at least one Democrat in the room. But the way this all went about, is this right? I mean, is this is, is this right at all, Erica? No, I, I think I don't think it is at all. We always hear this rhetoric from our president and from the GOP that America first, put mm -hmm. America first, and we continue to see that we have to make sure that this is not a party issue, a party issue. This is about the people, mm -hmm. and the people need to know exactly what is going on. So you're saying the Democrats should have been included from the beginning? Of course, we of course we need to know exactly what's going on, and we have to include our people. You know, when you think about it, putting America first and making sure that we're in meetings, we're scared to put the Democrats in meetings. Meetings, but we continue to see the same president uh, that demeans that to, to be calling overseas and to be calling Putin and to making sure that you're meeting with him, but we can't have a simple meeting with the Democrats. But putting that aside, you know, when you talk about getting people in a room, when you're talking about the intelligence briefing, uh, Kimberly, you know, I think some people are looking at this saying, if you include Democrats in the process, at least in reviewing this, it removes the specter of it being partisan. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you believe that? Or, I mean, is there another way to go about this? I think Democrats should be included. I'm never that person that says we don't reach across the aisle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. But I think that fear is real. I mean, obviously, this investigation went on for how long? Uh, the, the Mueller investigation. So it's like, are, is their intentions real? Or is they coming into the room to kind of be a distraction? What is their intent for being in the room? Did they ever lay that out? I don't think they did. Now, should we reach across the line and talk to them? Yes. But I, I remain cautious. You have every single security agency in America saying that Russia was involved in, in this election. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, if every single security agency is saying that, then why would it hurt to have Democrats in the room? And Trump was spied on. This isn't like... Well, well, was, it, well. was there a line between spying or there... Because the, the Trump campaign was warned at one point that there was some Russian in, interest in interfering with the, with the, with the election. And, and not, you know, collusion and interference are two totally different categories here. But the president has, has mentioned spying quite a bit. Is there a difference between spying and, and the FBI informant? 
No, I think it's the same thing. He, it, he was spying. He even said long ago he believed that his uh, Trump Towers was being wiretapped. That turned out to be true. I believe he was spied on, and I think this will come and show. I, I don't think the president was, was being spied on. I think that we have to make sure that we are protecting America, and I think that the FBI is doing everything they can to protect American citizens. All right, let's switch gears one more time. Let's talk about the NFL uh, new policy that they just came out with yesterday. Today, President Trump came out and said the NFL made the right call by saying any player who is on the field who does not uh, stand up for the national anthem, the team should be fined. I, I'm just curious, where do you guys stand on this? We'll start with you. You know, we have to really look at uh, the basis of this. Mm -hmm. You know, these players are not, they are protesting for their rights mm -hmm. and for human rights. Mm -hmm. And that is what needs to be put out in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Not kneeling. Is that affecting the game? Is that affecting us going into the game. If you can sit here and tell me that every American or every single NFL person that is saying that they need to have this policy infringed on has sat up and, and stood up at every single national anthem, whether they were sitting down at their house, whether they were watching a game, mm -hmm. then you can come to me and tell me that this policy needs to be enforced. We need to be worried more about the player's health and their mental state. Let's talk about that. Let's open that type of but, but I think when we go from, from, from that to talk about health, it also deflects from what the original intent was of, of the of the protest itself mm -hmm. when you talk about uh, racial injustice inequality yep. in this country and I think it was unfair that some people were framing this as an issue of being um, unpatriotic that said I stand I you know I always believe in standing but Kimberly what, what's your takeaway from this I think okay so Colin Kaepernick uh, correct me if I'm wrong he did this to raise awareness awareness yeah. has been raised even the president of the United States is tweeting about it it's there what is the next step it's I see not no enough awareness endgame. at all but it's not enough awareness everybody at knows all. that the president's but, tweeting but who, about it but who says when the awareness is ended because he was protesting um, he was trying to raise awareness of, of injustice and in how black men were being treated by right, police correct. we're still dealing with incidents look look what just happened in Milwaukee every single so day. Why not, NBA players why so not, never say that awareness forefront. has been but raised. You can never direct, say that our human rights are being raised because of, because Trump tweeted about it. Why a tweet not does then nothing go to your local awareness. legislators or go down to Capitol Hill and try to change some of these laws on the books? I don't think many people know a police officer. There's a law that says police officers can shoot when in fear. Maybe we should change that law. Maybe so they should define, that police brutality define is, fear. It, you, you are saying right here that yes. police brutality is okay. So we're, we're I'm not okay saying it's okay. Stuff. Let's go down. Let's tackle this issue. Let's get up off the ground, on kneeling on the field, and let's go tackle the issue. And it takes both parties and it takes both sides to do that. And so when, when we can say that both parties... So we'll just keep kneeling parties, until and, when? We will kneel and we will protest because if you look back to what happened back in the days of protest and protesting works, it's our First Amendment right. If it was the Second Amendment right being infringed on, everybody would be up in arms. It's our First Amendment right being infringed on, and that is the bottom line. So if these players want to kneel, if they want to stand, let them do it. It is not infringing on their job. It okay. is not infringing on what they came here to do. Let them protest. We got yep. and so 10 people, seconds. Yeah, so people that get mad, Colin Kaepernick and friends, that decided not to vote in the last election, maybe they should think about who they vote for or, or even just go vote next time so oh, they wouldn't have they will. Like President Trump they will. infringing on their rights. All right. You, terrible. Ladies, we appreciate the lively discussion. Absolutely. <laughs> Kimberly Klasik, Erica Thomas, thank you guys thank for you joining both. us. Thank you both. It was always yeah. great. Good to see you both. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, big story today. Harvey Weinstein expected to be